Welcome to Top 3D Cuts. In this video tutorial, I want to show you the user interface of Final Cut Pro to get you started on learning the necessary skills and techniques for editing. Uh, that way I can really provide you with a solid foundation for managing the content that you want to create, uh, whether it's editing animation or motion graphics or even live shots combined with computer graphics. Uh, and really these techniques are fundamental and necessary to crafting a digital story and so uh, I think this is going to help you accomplish your vision of what you want to create. So for this first video, I want to go over the user interface and what these windows are, what they mean to you, and how to use them. So this first window here on the top left is the browser window. Uh, the browser is used for organizing all of your media. You're going to have your video files in here, uh, some audio files for either music or sound effects, and maybe even some still photography photos. Um, you can also have some graphics in there. So actually, let me go ahead and pull something in. Now, there are a number of ways to import into Final Cut. Uh, you can go up here to File. This is your menu here. Go up to File, Import, and then tell it what files to import. Um, but I actually just like the drag and drop method. So I'm going to hit my Finder. Uh, I kind of have this up and ready. I'm going to grab this video that I want to bring in here. So just drop it right in this region. All right. And then what I want to do is double click on this. Now, when I double click, I don't want to double click on the text. I actually just want to double click on this icon. If I double click on the text, uh, I actually run the chance of maybe single clicking like that, and then I can you know, change it on accident. And it, it, anyway, it's just better to always click and drag from these icons whenever you do something. So, double clicked it. That should open it in my viewer. I don't see anything yet because the beginning of my movie uh, happens to be dark like this. So if I bring my playhead forward a little bit, you'll be able to see what's going on here. Okay. And this window is called the viewer window. What it's used for are your main edits. So what I want to be doing in this window is just my basic edits. I want to have my in and my out point set. Now what that means is the in is going to be the start of the video clip that you want to keep and put in your timeline. So I'm going to come down here to this button. This is the mark in button. I can set it by clicking it or I can hit I on my keyboard. That does the same thing. I like using shortcuts on the keyboard, so I'm going to go over them as I go through this. Now, as, as you come along here in the timeline, set the playhead to where you want the clip to end. So what you're doing is picking out a piece of this whole little chunk and you're just going to keep a little part of it. So I got my playhead set to where I want it. I want my video to end here, maybe right on here where it kind of goes blank. Then I want to set my out point. I'm going to hit O for out. I can also hit this button here for the out point. And my next step is to insert this into the timeline. Now there are a number of ways to do this. Actually, in Final Cut, there are a number of ways to do everything pretty much. Um, so I'm just going to really show you maybe like one or two ways that are what I think is kind of the easiest way, the best way. And uh, when it gets in more into shortcuts, I can show you some other ways. So what I want to do is actually click here, drag it over, and go to Insert. Now what's going to happen when I do this is it's going to take this clip from here, the in, to the out, and it's going to insert it down here into the timeline. So watch. Click, drag, insert. This pops up for the very first time. What this says is, do you want this sequence here in the timeline to match this video. And I, I just hit yes because I already know the settings of it. It's 1080p and the codec I'm editing in is ProRes 422HQ. It's important to know those codecs and later I'm going to have a video uh, specifically just on codecs. So just hit yes. Okay, so I was able to drag this clip over here into the canvas and that inserted it down here into the timeline. Now there are other ways to insert this in the timeline, but I'll get to those in a minute. What I want to first mention is that this canvas here is a direct relationship to what is going on in the timeline. It is a visual representation. So if there's some junk in here, it's going to visually show you up here. Now watch, if I take my playhead here, it's the same as the playhead right there. If I take my playhead, I'm going to move it back, and you're going to see visually what's going on here in the timeline. 
So that's what that window here is for, just to kind of represent your video. Now the timeline in here is where all of your clips are going to go. You're going to put these all together in a sequence, uh, hopefully a logical sequence, so that you can follow it and understand it and maybe craft some type of story out of it. Typically what I like to do is group together uh, maybe my beginning, my middle, and my end clips. So say for example, this maybe is my beginning. I'm going to have a couple of my clips here. Maybe give myself some space. And notice, wherever I move this playhead is where the clip inserts from that point forward. Right, I'm going to hit Option minus. It's just going to bring my timeline down a little bit smaller. And this actually doesn't change anything at all. This just changes your perspective of it. So I'm going to insert a couple more of these. Now, this is arbitrary what I'm doing. I'm inserting these, and right now they don't make a story at all. They don't mean anything. All I'm doing is just showing you how to go about inserting them. Insert some more there. And then I want to group together my end. So I have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Three distinct parts of a story. So, to the right here we have your toolbar and an audio meter. Later I'm going to be getting into what these tools are and what they can do and how to use them for editing. But what I want to say just real fast is that when you are in Final Cut and you're in here and you're clicking around, uh, always go back to your pointer tool here. Uh, now for a year uh, for Channel 9 I actually used to teach a Final Cut Pro editing class and you know I'd have these students in the class and, and they'd be like, they're clicking around in all these weird places that, you know, why, why are they even clicking there? I don't even know, but, but it's doing weird stuff. And I, and I say, look, just look over here to the right. What are your toolbars? What tool are you on? You know, they'd be on these different things. So you always go back to your pointer unless you have a very specific need to use these other ones. Otherwise, it's going to be behaving strangely. So that's just one tip. Um, another one is... Whenever you're looking at your timeline here, it can get kind of, you know, confusing because sometimes I see people with uh, timelines, you know, they're stretched out way like this. They don't know what's going on. It's it's too too far stretched out. And so a quick shortcut that I like to do is just to do Shift Z. Watch Shift Z is going to put my entire timeline. It's going to fit it, all my clips right there, visually in front of you, into the timeline so you can see it. It's perfect. Uh, there, you know, you can stretch this out by doing Option Plus or Option Minus. And, and again, in Final Cut, there's always more than one way to do things. There's, actually, there's like five ways that I could actually stretch this out. You know, I could use this tool over here and stretch this out. Or I could, uh, see, I could grab this little bar here and you know, stretch it and scrunch it. And there's just so, there's, there's a lot of different ways. But, but I try to stick to the keyboard shortcuts because for me, they're quicker and easier, and my hands are just like right there, ready to do it. So I find that to be easiest. Uh, real quick, I'll go over a couple of these tabs over here just to show you when you're inserting things. Okay, so these tabs here, now you can have a lot of different layers. Actually, I think you can have like 99 video layers. So I can right click and just add a few of these in here. It's kind of like Photoshop in a way that whatever is on the top most layer is going to have priority. So if you have a video that's up here above this one, it's going to take priority and show you that. However, if you have a video that's up here and it's got some audio tracks below it, you're only going to see that top video, but you're going to hear all the audio tracks. Now you can have a bunch of these tracks. What I like to do is to have my, my main A roll here. Now A roll is like, this, A roll just means your main footage. Uh, for example, if I would do an interview, my A roll would be the interview shot and my B roll would be supporting footage. So say my interview is on a, a guy talking about him racing cars and uh, you know I'm zooming into his face and he's talking and then I want to cut away to cars racing that car's racing clip is going to be my B-roll. It's just supporting footage. So usually I have my A-roll on this layer, and then, let's see, I'm going to move this up for you. This is called my source and destination tab. 
source on the left, destination here on the right. So if I move the source here up to destination track two, when I insert this, watch what happens. So I insert, goes up on that layer. Same thing, if I move these audio tracks down, it's gonna do that same thing. Those audio tracks are now gonna lay wherever those tabs are that I put them. So now it's down there. So what I like to do is have my, eh, I'll put these back. I like to have my B-roll up here on the second layer. It makes it real easy to cut back and forth to these alternative shots, and it doesn't destroy what's beneath it. So I can take this and I can move it wherever I want my timeline and say, oh, I want to start it earlier, I want to start it later. I can move it around. But if I have my B-roll down here on the same track, then I say, oh, well, I want my B-roll to start right there. Watch, that just overwrote my A-roll piece. It just overwrote that and I can't get it back. Now if I change my mind and say, oh, I want to move it over here, well, now I got a problem. There are ways for me to extend this edge out and fix that, but it's, it makes it a lot more work. And it just, trust me, it's just a lot easier if you just have your B-roll up here. It's just a good practice to be in and helps you keep track of things. So what I like to do is maybe my A-roll, my B-roll, and then up here on this third one, a lot of times I do text layers or different graphics. And um, lastly, down here for the audio, for the sound effects, I, I usually do you know, my, my supporting A-roll, uh, my B-roll sound effects. B-roll sound effects are kind of like natural sounds. Um, you know, if you, you have a, a shot of a car driving by, sometimes you maybe want a little bit of that sound. You don't want it full blast audio though. You actually want to bring it down real low so it's like a background noise. Uh, and then these, these tracks below it are for more sound effects. And then lastly, down towards the bottom, I usually put a, um, a music or some other type of audio file down in there. Okay, so that was just a quick overview of the different windows in Final Cut and maybe just a little bit about them just to get you started. Uh, I remember whenever I first started doing this about uh, five or six years ago, I was looking at these two windows here, the viewer and the canvas, and I was like, you know, why are these two different things? They're, they look exactly the same, and how do you use them? So just know that this one here on the left is going to be your basic edits. Most fundamental is your in and your out. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching Top 3D Tuts.